Yo, this is your favorite friendly neighborhood Toronto and today we're going to be talking about the different approaches that Sony and Microsoft are taking with their respective consoles. So executive VP of gaming at Microsoft, Phil Spencer has stated that Xbox exclusive games being released in the next year or two will also be available for current gen all the way back to the Xbox One that was released at launch. While we have the president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, Jim Ryan, echoing Mark Cerny's statements stating that they believe in, generation, in generations and confirming that all future exclusives will only be released on the PlayStation 5. So here we have two completely opposite approaches for exclusive games. I've been constantly hearing that the Xbox has proven that its approach is more pro-consumer and on the next end that Sony is anti-consumer. So let's break this down. Let's take someone who goes and spends $400 to $600 on a new Xbox Series X. And guess what? There's no content that's available for them that takes full advantage of the investment that they've made. While they still have options that they could have kept their $400 to $600 and continue playing the same games available on the console that they currently own, or spend significantly less for the current gen console for the same experiences if they never had a console to begin with. Or if they have a PC, they can play the games there. On the other hand, that person could have spent that $400 to $600 on the PlayStation 5 and then be able to experience games that they could only experience on that console due to the fact that those games are taking full advantage of the new technology that exists there that didn't exist on the PlayStation 4. I'm not talking about just improved graphics where the overall experience of that game is the same, but the inclusion of the SSD and the CPUs in both consoles can add to the complexity skill and design of the games which can change the overall game experience personally i find it pro consumer to give consumers games that validate their purchase and investment in the new console this has implications even on the development side of things as well coming from me someone who spent four years doing game development in university but full disclosure i've never published any games i can tell you that when you start designing games most of the time the ideals start off being very grand and what tends to happen is that they begin to scale back and alter to fit within the constraints of the platform that you're developing on. Now, of course, the GPU brings beauty and shine to the game, but the CPU and the memory allocation and memory management, along with some other factors, regulate the design of the games. Now, the CPU and SSD, even the raw 2.4 gigabytes per second of the Series X are significantly greater than the speeds you get on the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X. But the developers designing games for the Series X have to make sure that it runs on the launch Xbox One, which is already a hindrance when developing games that are on the Series X level. Cyberpunk 2077 is, is an example of this, as it's been reported that the main reason for the delay to September was the difficulty in getting the game to run on the launch Xbox One. See, all, dev all developers can do going from the Series X to the One X is increase the level of details in their assets, improve the lighting effects, and increase the frame rate. But essentially, it's the same game. So you can even say that all Series X games in the first year or two are Xbox One games upscaled. With the exclusion of the medium which is developed by blooper team who are also not part of xbox game studios now sony to me has been pro consumer because they deliver amazing content and a lot of it is exclusive to the console so if you own a playstation 4 currently or in the market for a playstation 4 you're already covered with a full generation of amazing games to be played that were designed for the playstation 4 along with third-party games that will still be released on the platform on the opposite end of that, imagine owning a PlayStation 4 and you buy a game that was designed with the PS5 in mind and then scaled down drastically to run on the PlayStation 4. You would have then spent 60 US dollars or $80 in Canada for a game that is having frame rate issues, graphical downgrades, pop-ins, frequent and long load screens as the system can only load and stream data at a fraction of the rate on scales of magnitude than the PlayStation 5. Now tell me how that is a pro consumer experience for you. I didn't even mention that the additional resources and time a developer will have to use to try to optimize for the lower spec console. Scalability is something that I continue to hear as a solution to these problems, but it's just not it. The scalability is easier implemented for the visuals than getting the game to adapt its size, its scale and complexities and its design to different machines. So when scalability is used, it's used for things like using high resolution textures instead of using low resolution ones, adding or removing shadows, no, essentially Grandma Jones is just scaling 
different visual aspects of the game that require different amounts of horsepower for the demanding calculations. Now, the Xbox Series X is an impressive piece of kit, and I would like to see Microsoft release true next-gen games that will take full advantage of the velocity architecture, the machine learning, and the CPU and SSD that it provides, to make sure that there is some good competition between Microsoft and Sony during this generation. Hopefully, I've been able to illuminate how Sony's approach can be pro-consumer. Xbox is just in a different situation where they need to provide more high AAA quality exclusive games to current Xbox One gamers, especially Xbox One X gamers who've had an extremely light supply of games that take advantage of that 6 teraflop hardware. So guys, as I wrap this up, what approach do you guys prefer? Xbox's cross-gen then after one or two years push next-gen or Sony's push next-gen immediately approach? And why you feel that way? Let me know down in the comments. So thank you for those who made it through to the end of this video. I appreciate if you can share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of the new videos that get uploaded. Again, every like is really appreciated as it does a lot in helping me grow this channel. I will have all the details on where you can follow everything Toronto in the description. That's everything for now. So it's not bye, but I see you later on the next one. And I'm out!